If you want to sell buttons, collectible buttons, useful buttons on the internet, on eBay or Etsy or elsewhere, the first thing you need to know is why on earth do people buy buttons on the internet? I think there are three main reasons that people buy buttons on the internet or elsewhere. One is to use them. For example, if you're knitting a sweater, you might want to put some buttons on it. Or if you're sewing something, a garment, if you're making a purse, if you're doing crafts, if you're making a collage, if you're making a Christmas tree out of buttons or some kind of junk journal or sculpture or steampunk thing or who knows. People buy buttons to use them and to replace buttons they've lost. For example, you lose a button on your coat or your shirt, you try to find one that looks the same and replace it or maybe you cut them all off and replace them all. So that's one reason, utilitarian. Um, reason number two would be collectors. There are probably casual collectors of buttons, people who just have a little button box like their grandma did or whatever, and just buy them because they're cute or pretty or whatever. But there are also serious button collectors who are quasi-academic or perhaps fully academic in their collecting, and it's serious business, and there are a lot of parameters and desires that they are abiding by, and I'll talk more about that later. And the third general category of why people buy buttons is because they have to do with something else. For example, um, they are researching or collecting or interested in some historical period like the Civil War, so they're buying Civil War buttons or any other sort of conflict or major period of history. Uh, people were wearing buttons, so you might want to collect the buttons from that era. Uh, you might also want to use them for historical uh, reenactment or costuming. So that's sort of a util utilitarian slash historical hybrid motive of button buying. But, you know, there are people who are recreating historical costumes to wear at things like Civil War reenactments or renaissance fairs or society for creative anachronism things or crazy events I don't even know about or you know PBS uh, soirees or something um, then there are you know historical costumers for drama for uh, theater and film and so forth and even, you know, people recreating textiles or what have you for historical houses or costumes for docents or... So let's look on the internet at some of these buttons, what they are, what they look like, and what kinds of categories these button buying people would be buying buttons from. There's a wonderful, wonderful world of buttons, and I'll show you some that are going to appeal to those different groups of collectors. I just talked about collectors or button utilizers. So here's a, a search I did on eBay for sweater buttons. These are things people would use, like these toggle kind or these clasps that are, are um, generally used on sort of Nordic Fair Isle style sweaters. Here's what I was saying, some um, specific brand name buttons that people use to replace lost ones or to do whatever they're going to do. A uh, big lot of just sort of brown wood buttons or these big wood buttons or Celtic metal buttons or whatever. So these are all kinds of things people would probably buy to use. Um, you know, here's some nice thistle buttons. This is a person who has a, a variation listing with all different kinds on offer. Um, a Tory Burch replacement button. 
two big coat buttons. This would be great if you had a vintage coat um, with buttons you didn't like or button buttons that were lost and you wanted to replace them. I've definitely done that. <laughs> Large lot of sewing buttons. So you get the idea. Here's another brand, Carol Little. Here's some fun ones you might use in some kids craft type thing. Here's some 1950s ones, leather buttons, just kind of generic plastic ones. Here's another brand. Here's another brand. Here's some fun marbly ones. Large lot. These would be great if you made shirts all the time. Another brand. Something that's just a fun one-off. Another of these clasp ones. So these are the kinds of things people buy to use in sort of knitting, crocheting, sewing projects. And also to replace missing buttons, perhaps. Then here's another search I did on buttons for crafts. And you'll see there's lots of big lots of kind of what I would call cheapy buttons for cheap. <laughs> so here's someone selling just a hundred mixed sewing buttons, little flower ones, these little plastic ones, little flowers, little hearts, little teddy bears, more flowers, more cutesy stuff. So, you know, some crafters will be looking for this stuff, for a cute world. Some will be looking for something a little more serious, but this is definitely a market. Um, if you have a ton of, you know, blue and green buttons, you can make a, a lot like this. And they're not necessarily old or fancy or that interesting, but, you know, they made it all one color, so the picture looks attractive. And it works as a lot. The next one, next category is, what did I search for here? Okay, vintage buttons. So this is a kind of overlappy category. This is partially going to appeal to the crafting folks and also there are going to be some in here that will appeal to the collectors who are looking for something super specific for reasons I will explain in a little bit. So these are vintage. They're totally boring, but this one is super specific. It's a specific shape. It's a specific material. Same here. This is something that somebody would collect for very specific reasons, and the price um, reflects that. But then there's, you know, some other vintage buttons people would probably buy to use. Those, these, these. These ones could be purchased either because they're needed in a collection or to use in some project. These are probably for use and even though they're not all matching. Same with these. You know, these are collected for the other reason because they relate to something else. The Beatles, obviously. Same with these. These relate to suffrage, so there's that historical overlap quality. These are probably for some super fun craft project, I hope. These are artists created by this person. These ones are probably new. People are putting vintage because they're using vintage um, graphics in them. And these are what I would call artist buttons. They're one-off handmade crafty things. So buttons can be a craft unto themselves and then be purchased by other people to make other crafts. And then I also did a search on antique buttons. And here we get more of the things that serious collectors are looking for and serious history buffs. These happen to be, these top ones are, are what I would call fancy buttons. <laughs> and they fall under certain categories of specific types. And you can see some go for a lot of money. Even, you know, these sort of $20 range ones are, are great for one button if you think about the economics of selling and you know how you buy things in bulk there's a $50 button that's a dog you know some don't quite get the interest for whatever reason they made them an auction anyway so these are all generally older probably they all are technically antique 100 years 1920 or earlier it looks like people have been pretty good at categorizing them you can also see that the, the more serious button people 
know how to take a good button picture, these close-ups where you really see it. And even, you know, these dinky little <laughs> um, China buttons are extremely collectible. And these are tiny, they're really tiny. So you get the idea of these more collectible buttons that are, that are much fancier, more unique, and certainly older. Here is the National Button Society, and this is what's sort of driving a lot of that serious collector activity. It's a, a national U.S. organization. I'm sure there are equivalent ones in many countries. You pay to become a member. They have a, uh, I think, quarterly publication that's quite it's quite scholarly. They have a convention every year. They have local meetings and shows and stuff. I mean, when there's not a pandemic, obviously. So they provide education and resources for button collectors, and they do studies and stuff. The NBS Bulletin is the journal type thing. And then they have other booklets and books and stuff. I mean, these are not super professionally produced for the most part, but they are the only place to get this kind of information. So the National Button Society has codified these taxonomies and standards and guides for buttons. And this is their button country site, which is an educational resource for button collectors. And this is actually a fabulous site for learning about buttons. Uh, and I'll show you what kind of thing happens here. <laughs> I'm not trying to be cagey and keep these button collecting things secret. It's just kind of weird and hard to explain. This is just one type of button, black glass, black glass buttons. And you can see that these are all different types that they have categorized. And this is not even all of them by any means. And then there are these worksheets they have where you can try to collect all the types. And there's this book where you get all the gory details. You're looking for a black matte glass button, a black shiny glass button, a combination of matte and shiny, any black glass you like that are you think are like the best of the best. Loop shank type, loop and plate, key shank, whistle. And these are all certain things. And this is page one of three of this, this worksheet. So as you can see, if you get into this, there are many, many buttons you want to collect. This is just one type of button. This is just black glass. There's also celluloid, ceramic, china, enamel, fabric, textile, different colors of glass, blah, 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 all these other ones and other materials. And there's then there's more and more subsections and more main sections. And then there's these divisions and sections and materials. And it's very complicated. But if you get the secret book, which I, I think is called the blue book, it explains it all. And I have one somewhere, but it is missing at the moment. What people do with those worksheets eventually is they compete for who has filled it out the best with actual buttons. So you may see things um, like this out in the wild or on eBay, as this one is. And this is a competition card of some kind of button topic. Well, at least I assume it is. Sometimes in the ye olden days, people just made button cards for display purposes. But in general, people will make button cards to compete in certain categories at National Button Society meetings and I assume the convention. You might collect all of these with your worksheet and then design this card to showcase it the best and what people do or did is you know actually like draw out these circles and or you know in some crafty way there's all different kinds of ways and then they sew them on the card people also did things like using wire or pipe cleaners to attach them to the card but i believe that is generally frowned upon these days as being detrimental to the button shanks so sewing is safest 
So sometimes you might encounter a full button card you want to sell as is for whatever reason. Maybe the buttons aren't spectacular enough to stand out on their own as for sale, but as a group, they're more appealing. Like you can see this person priced this at $56. There's lots of button cards on eBay. If you look, these are all black glass, such as we were speaking of specifically check <laughs> specifically dimmy which is short for diminutive which is a national button society size classification there's all kinds of size classifications too not to scare you off you don't have to know all this stuff i'm just trying to explain why people are looking for certain buttons so rapidly because there are there is this whole world of specific things they're looking for to compete or to just have the pleasure of completing their their card that's kind of the deal with the national button society i encourage you to look at their main site and their button country site to understand it a little more and if you get into it then you might want to order some of their publications or even become a member and get the journal but moving on to category three things related to other things of course there's this whole world of military buttons and I think generally people differentiate between military buttons and uniform buttons versus like fancy or women's buttons. Now, of course, during a lot of periods of history, men wore fancy buttons. In fact, up until, you know, somewhat recently, vest buttons were fancy. And prior to that, I mean, there's definitely been periods of fashion history where men wore more decorative clothing than women. So calling them women's or ladies buttons is a little bit of a misnomer, but you know, it's kind of the standards we have today. So in general, I mean, I call them fancy buttons usually. There are these, and then there are uniform buttons, which tend to be brass, though not always. They can be lots of kinds of metal or plastic or horn or any number of materials, but the, the the sort of cliche uniform button is brass and you know they look kind of like this they american ones have a lot of eagles on them um, british ones have a lot of heraldry on them so on and so forth people collect these because they're into military history whatever period or because they are doing a reenactor costume like you know this so there's these you know people who dress up in Civil War clothes and go to the park and <laughs> have battles <laughs> with fake ammunition. It's kind of funny. Of course, the Civil War is postponed this year because of the pandemic, of course. Um, and then there's historical costumers. And there's some, if you get into this, there are some really fun YouTubers who talk about historical costuming. Karolina Zabroska from Poland, is she's really great. Let's see, Bernadette Banner is a big one. Different personalities and styles, but there's a lot of people who talk about historical costuming. Oh, this show, A Stitch in Time, is so good. It's a, it's a BBC show where um this woman sorry this cool woman who like i think is so awesome she uh recreates clothing from paintings from different eras and explains the whole technology behind the clothing creation highly recommended it's on youtube or bbc possibly if you are in a bbc zone but i've gone completely off track so I think that is the basics of why people buy buttons on the internet. And I only showed eBay in this video, but you, there's a lot of uh, button commerce going on on Etsy, both for crafting reasons and history vintage reasons. There's also specific more high-end button sites where people sell military and or fancy button. I won't go into that right now. I hope this this wet your whistle for sewing buttons. And if you're into sewing buttons, you'll get the pun there. Please subscribe if this kind of content helps you in your reselling journey. And hit the thumbs up also. And thank you and take care.